Because Jesuit actions are centred on blind obedience to their superiors, they are told that they will never be held accountable for anything they do, not even by God. They are absolved of all personal responsibility as they become mere puppets for those that are higher up in the hierarchy. A professor told a student who was studying under him to become a Catholic priest, You will never have to give an account to God for actions you do by the order of your legitimate superiors. If they were to deceive you, being themselves deceived, they alone would be responsible for the error you have committed. Your sin would be imputed to you as long as you follow the golden rule that is a base for all Christian philosophy and perfection, humility and obedience. See how deceitful this is. The superiors are basically saying, you'll never have to give an account of your actions to God, don't worry about it. This allows them to perpetrate any act in the belief that they are beyond judgment. If their superior tells them to carry out a murder, they think that if they obey, then God will not hold them accountable and will instead blame the superior. This is one method the hierarchy uses to overcome or bypass the conscience of an individual. When you combine this with the spiritual exercises that have taught them to suppress human emotion and imbue them with demons, you can see how they would become capable of some extreme acts of violence and anything else for that matter. A second vital principle for Jesuits can be summed up in the phrase, the end justifies the means. Remember this one, it's very important. Before this maxim, the ideas of absolute right and wrong completely vanish. Conceivably, there is no crime or atrocity that is not allowed as long as it is for the greater glory of God. In fact, the sins that achieve the right result become holy in the eyes of the Jesuit, no matter how disgusting. You can lie, cheat, steal, rape or murder, but if the ends are the right ones in their eyes, then the means are justified. This exact concept also exists in Islam, where lying, deception, murder and other atrocities become acceptable if it furthers the cause of Allah on the earth. A third twisted principle of the Jesuits is probabilism. If a Jesuit has in mind to do something but knows it is very probably illegal, if he can find the merest hint that it may not be, he is allowed to continue with his action. For example, if he consults 100 teachers or doctors about his intended action and 99 say that it would be unlawful, but then one tells him that it may not be, he can act on that 1% probability that it is in fact lawful. In fact, if the Jesuit can imagine any reason in his own mind why his action may not be unlawful, however unlikely, this frees him to do it. It's a form of self-deception, lying to yourself to try to keep the conscience clear. Fourthly, there is the idea of directing the intention. This is the idea that if the person meditates on something holy while they perpetrate something evil, the soul contracts no guilt or stain. Therefore, the Jesuit can kill someone or lie or cheat or steal, but as long as he is focusing on something holy at the time in his mind, their soul remains white as snow. Again, such is the depth of deceit within the Jesuit system that they deceive even themselves. Fifthly and finally, there is the doctrine of equivocation or mental reservation. This policy allows the Jesuits to follow a secret policy while stating something completely different to the outside world. This is directly from the mysteries where secret doctrines and purposes were hidden under double meanings and secret symbols that seem quite innocent to the uninitiated. A Jesuit quoted, it is permitted to use ambiguous terms, leading people to understand them in a different sense from that in which we understand them. A man may swear that he never did something, though he actually did, meaning within himself that he did not do so on such a day, or before he was born, or under any circumstances, while the words he employs may have no such sense as would discover his meaning. He goes on to say, it is the intention that determines the quality of the action, and one may avoid falsehood if, after saying or denying something aloud, then add something under his breath that, if true, would make his statement the truth. So take this example. A Jesuit murders a man on a Thursday, and the police take him in for questioning and ask him if he murdered the man in question. The Jesuit replies, I did not murder him, which is obviously a lie because he did, but then under his breath or mentally he adds the words, on Friday. These inaudible words that he whispered to himself after the initial lie have now made the statement true. By doing this, 
Jesuits can permit perjury and in their own eyes remain blameless.